Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks everyone for coming to the talk. So I would like to start by uh, considering some questions. So and how, then these are the questions. So how the financial crisis affect migration? What are the benefits of jogging every day? How one can improve the transportation network of the city? How to recommend uh, fun activities to a tourist? So what do these questions have in common? So one commonality is that people are realizing the power of solving these problems using uh, data-driven approaches. And not just like small studies, small scale studies of carefully collected data, but really aggregating large amounts of data coming from the activity of millions of people, possibly data that have a lot of noise and inconsistencies. Uh, and uh, furthermore, technological advances in collecting data and uh, analyzing data allow us to make this possible. Uh, so this is a talk ab about data analysis. I'm going to talk about the potential of aggregating large volumes of data. I'm going to give a broad overview of this uh, research area and I'm going to uh, give some concrete examples, uh, both from my own research and also of research of other people, just to give a more complete picture of the area. And this is going to be, uh, I'm going to stay really at the motivation level. I'm not going to go to any technical details of, of data analysis techniques. So everything is about uh, applications and motivation. So what kind of data we are talking about? So we are talking of, about data coming from online world, like the web or social media, and, uh, but also data coming from the physical world, like mobile devices and sensors. So every time we go to a restaurant and we take a photo with our friends in the restaurant or we write a review about the restaurant we went, or every time that we go to we perform some activity in the social network uh, and, uh, or we comment on a blog post or something, we leave a digital trace. And the same when we walk in the street, when we drive our car in the street, in the city, when we take the bus, and if you think about it, also when we consume energy or consume water. So a lot of data are collected, and the challenge is how to analyze this data and how to extract patterns in order to understand the world and the society around us. And furthermore, how to use this data and these models and these patterns we build to feed, to build applications that uh, facilitate life and improve the quality of life, that makes our life more easier, more fun, more efficient, uh, more interesting, if you, if you will. Uh, so here are some possibilities we have. So what you can do with the data. Uh, so I present this kind of classification. So the first thing is we can try to understand the world around us. So we can try to extract knowledge, to find patterns, and so on. To understand how people are using services, how people are using technology. Okay? So then we can try to use the data in order to solve problems. So somebody has a concrete question, and then we build an application to answer this question. Furthermore, many, very often people don't know what to look for. So we can use the data and, uh, in order to make recommendations to people and suggestions to find interesting things. Okay? And finally, we can use the data in order to formulate global optimization problems and help people taking decisions about various issues. Um, so, okay, so we talk about social media. So you might have heard about uh, and you might have used extensively Wikipedia. Uh, but the, the, here are uh, some other uh, social media applications that you might or might not know, like Twitter, or Flickr, and so on. Uh, so the idea here, this, these are applications in which people provide content and also use content. So think about you, YouTube, for example. So people upload their videos, but they also are watching videos. Furthermore, people perform actions, and the actions generate more data to feed in the loop. So when a lot of people are watching a video, the video is becoming popular and this is possibly recommended to other people. Uh, so in, in overall, uh, social media have this, uh, create these very complex information ecosystems and give tremendous opportunities to understand complex phenomena. Uh, for example, what is trending? What are the, we can track events, we can try to correlate the the data with social, social economic phenomena, you can try to find special temporal patterns, so on. No doubt people have tried even to predict the stock market. 
Uh, so let me give you, a, try to be a little bit, bit, bit more concrete what I mean by this complex information ecosystem. So I will talk about one specific application. So Flickr is a website that people use to upload and share photos. So we see here an example. So one person has uploaded this photo and you can see that there is a lot of information. So there is some textual description about the photo. So we say it's a snowy evening in Helsinki. There are some other photos of this person. We can see where the photo was taken, what time was taken, uh, even in what, with what camera was taken. Uh, we can see also the friends of these people and so on. Okay, so you can already see the inherent complexity and richness of the data. So, and what you can do with the data. So here is an example. So here is the map of San Francisco with uh, annotated by how people perceive the city and how have people have tagged their photos on the city. So these are not uh, labels produced by some, uh, some cartographer, like carefully selected labels, but this is really the perception of the people about the city. And what is interesting is that if you do this analysis on summer or, or winter, you get a different pictures. And if you do it in the evening, again, you get a different picture. You see what are the dining areas in the city and so on. Okay? So here is another example from the city of Helsinki, actually. So here, the researcher was able to identify which photos were taken by tourists and which photos were taken by locals. So I plot with a red dot the photos taken by tourists and with a blue dot the photos by locals. So you see that the locals, the tourists stick in one area, in the, in the center. They go to Esplanade and they go to Somelina and a little bit around. While the locals, they go to other areas. They, they go to nice areas, uh, but not so attractive to tourists, like some sea, seaside in Munkiniemi, Lautasari, and so on. Okay? Um, so, in a different domain, I'm switching to a different domain. So, when I, before coming to Alto, I was uh, researching in, uh, in Yahoo, and there we are working with query logs. So here the idea is that we uh, record and we analyze what people are searching on the web. Okay? So, so you see that uh, search engines generate, uh, like, uh, record what mi millions of, of people are looking for. So you, one, can perceive, one can see that they, they really capture the, the heartbeat of, of the society and, and what is happening. And if you integrate this data with other information, such as uh, demographics or geographical information, uh, very interesting facts emerge. So one example here is some research by Google. Researchers in Google were able to uh, track the spread of epidemics in, around the globe. Okay? So with my colleagues, we work on, on projects on analyzing query logs. So I give an example here of uh, of uh, application built around our research. So here I see uh, the query volume of one year for the query Occupy. Okay? And you see that at the beginning there are no queries, but suddenly there is some interest, some peak. Okay? And if you are familiar, if you remember, this reflects the interest of people around for, for this Occupy Wall Street movement that happened in the US around uh, September 2011. Okay, and then you see some peak corresponding to some other incident and then the volume goes down. Furthermore, you can uh, correlate the data with demographics. So in this example, you see that more men are interested in, 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 in for, for this uh, keyword than for more women. Or you can put it on the map and you can see that more liberal states like New York or uh, California are, are looking for um, are interested in this uh, query, okay? Uh, so going back to this classification, I talk about in the beginning. So, so I talk about uh, uh, data coming from online world, and I talk about extracting patterns and using the data to understand what is happening around us, okay? But we can also go uh, to different to to attack different tasks in this classification. So what about recommendations and, and suggestions? So one common problem here is what is called the information overload problem. So there are many interesting things online. There are blogs, news stories, and so on, that one does not have time to read all of them and does not even know where to go and to, to find. So it's very uh, useful to have systems that make recommendations to people about what to read. So as a research highlight, 
we work on the, on the problem of recommending news articles to, to users using this social microblogging called Twitter. You probably are familiar. So with Twitter, we can use very accurate user profiling of what people are interested in. And we can also capture the high speed spread of news. And we can use that to make very fast and very precise and accurate and relevant recommendations to, to users. Okay, so this is one example of recommendation. We can take that one step further and talk about recommendation and, and looking at it as a global optimization problem. And here is the idea. So I'm going back to this site uh, Flickr I talked about before. So personally, I like photography. I, I, I upload my photos there and I go to check the site. So in this example, this is a recommendation that the site gave for me. So it su suggests me that this is a photo that I might like. And in fact, I kind of relate to this photo. I'm really looking forward for the spring to come. Okay, and probably it's that one day in June that I hope to be here. So, but remember what I said before, that this is a system that people consume content, but also people provide content. So this photo belongs to some photographer, and if I like the photo and I make a comment, it's not only benefit for me, but also benefit for the photographer. He gets some, or she gets some reward. Right? So as another research highlight, we consider the problem of content recommendation as a matching problem. And we say, OK, how we make recommendations in order that the supply uh, matches the demand? Okay? And we were able to build algorithm in order to, uh, to scale that to very large data sets. OK. So, Going back to our classification now, it's very, so, uh, it's very interesting to see that one can really build applications that explore the whole space of possibilities and also to explore data that bond the physical world and the online world. So I already talked about how one can use data coming purely from the online world, from the social media, in order, and, and, and find uh, location information. But, uh, but, but recently, it's, becoming, it's, it's emerging this idea uh, that uh, there's a lot of more, gener more data generated by mobile devices, by sensors. I believe the next talk is going to, uh, to be uh, on that topic. Okay, so we have geotag contact in social media, mobile devices and sensors in the city, so our cell phone or uh, sensors in the traffic lights, even sensors recording the energy consumption and the water consumption, and so on. Okay? So, so let's look a little bit closer to that and see what we can do. How can we uh, like, uh, address problems similar to the ones I described before, but taking into account the location information? So here is an example. So this is some research done by colleagues of mine in, in Yahoo Research. And they use this service, this service of photos, in order to recommend tourist itineraries to people. So, and the idea is, is very neat and very nice. So they take this collection, this stream of photos that uploaded to the site, and then they break down. And as we saw, you are, it, it is possible to see what are the point of interest in the city, how much time is per, each person spends in each point of interest, how much time they, go, they need to go from one place to another. Okay, and, uh, and again, th think that if each one, each one of these person might d produce data that have a lot of noise, but when you aggregate all of this data, then you get much more accurate information. And uh, um, so, so, you, so, you can, so you can also see transitions from one point of interest to another, and you can put all of them together and really find uh, relevant paths and match them to the interest of the users. So I also work on a similar problem where we address this, the, same, the same problem of recommending tourist itineraries, but we want to do it interactively so that the user provides some constraints of what types of activities the user wants to do in the city and uh, what are the, the distance that uh, the tourists want to cover, the time budget, and so on. Okay, so this creates a lot of interesting optimization problems, but also problems of mining the data and problems about finding uh, what is relevant for each person. Okay, so what about traffic? Uh, so I talk also about sensors. So. In Barcelona, when I was uh, living before coming here, the city is, subsidized, is subsidizing a service of, uh, of bike sharing. So this, this service has 
Uh, it's extremely successful, so a lot of people are using it. So, th th like, I think hundreds of thousands of people are using it. It covers the whole city. So, personally, it was my only, my, my main means of transportation in the city. And uh, furthermore, what is very nice is that the data is open. So, one can go and get the data and then try to see what are the patterns of movement in the city, how people go from one place to the other, how people uh, go in, uh, in the morning from the sub suburban areas to the center center where the more uh, offices and so on. Okay, and then you can use the data to analyze what is happening and furthermore to, uh, to formulate optimization problems that can be used to, uh, to improve the service provided. Um, so I hope I have convinced you that this area offers many fascinating opportunities. So how to do personalized, recommendations that take into account the context, the location of the user, but also the interest of the user, how to uh, reduce traffic congestion, so how to, and even go for more exotic applications, how to, uh, to that people can form teams in, a, in an ad hoc fashion in order to solve problems that appear in the city or meet up according to their interests and so on, right? Or also applications about to healthcare, like emergency response. So there are many studies uh, of how Twitter was used in some emergencies, like on some flood or in some uh, earthquake, right? Or also how to use the data that we collect about ourselves in order to make some analysis about our lifestyle or even how to prevent crime. So I would like to conclude by saying, making the remark that the world is becoming digital in ways that go beyond our current understanding and beyond our abilities to produce, the, to, to, to analyze the data that we produce. And we need uh, more uh, techniques in order to do that. So I did not talk at all about the, what kind of methods uh, we are using. So this was, uh, I, I stay at, at the application level. So what are the opportunities, what are the application, the, the implications of using the data, what are the challenges, but also what are the risks? So, so one of them is privacy. So how do you use the data without uh, violating the privacy of, every, of each person so that everyone becomes anonymous? Another one is bias, for example. So not everyone has a cell phone or not everyone is using this bike service. So, so this lens we are using is somehow distorted. So how do we account for this bias? So these are all very interesting research questions. But uh, for the moment, I would like to stop here.